and just over the other side of those dunes is quite possibly the best new golf course in Ireland. Well, kind of. This is the Jameson Lynx at the Port Marnet Resort, and whilst the course isn't exactly new, it has undergone a major revamp. So as well as taking a look around the golf course, I'll be taking on a challenge over three very special golf holes. What a good time to join us. It was a decent up and down. This is Jameson's Lynx, and uh, I was fortunate enough to play uh, in the opening weekend following the revamp. But at that time, there was a very interesting hole that wasn't quite finished. It's a 17. So I've come back to take a closer look at that and a couple of other holes, which I'm going to take on a special challenge. So you know my favorite new thing about this course are these rakes, I like some kind of uh, therapy. I just could do this for hours. How good is that? Last time I played it, this place was absolutely superb, and as you can imagine, the condition, what you've seen already, is uh, not letting me down this time around. But the three holes are incredibly good holes. I did play two of them last time, but the 17th has become very much a risk or reward hole, and uh, should be exciting. Oh, I couldn't admit that any better. I think that's actually gone through the green. I can't quite make it out, but eight is, well, seven for me is the start of a great stretch of holes. Um, really tricky par four seven and the same with eight you've got to find a decent position off the tee which you did manage to do and like I said a really solid iron there but from what I can see that's gone through the back end and uh, there's plenty of these things scattered around the course which are pretty huge bunkers and if you go in them well you don't go far forward next shot Right, this three hole challenge can only start in one place and it's the ninth. It is by far my favourite golf hole on the course last time I played it. I'll tell you what, before I take on the challenge, let's hear what Paul McCanny has to say about the challenge we face on this par three ninth hole. The overall aim of the project was to try and bring in a, a better coastal experience. We're so close to the sea um, and we've got some really cool dunescapes here. So the idea was to try and use that topography that's there already and enhance it to create you know, great golf holes. So the first of those is number nine. Um, it's a par three that hits towards uh, the sea, true east in its direction. Um, and it, 
it's on a very high elevated tee box, uh, which creates a beautiful vista out across the Irish Sea. And you've got the islands of uh, Lamb Bay and Ireland's Eye, both slightly to the north and to the south that form a lovely backdrop to the whole. Um, the green is a, is a beer at style green, so there's pretty much three greens in one. Um, so depending on the pin position and the and the tee location, it uh, it plays quite differently every time. Um, so it's a cool, fun hole. Uh, it comes just after JJ's, which is our our pit stop, where you can get a, a nice pint of Guinness or or anything else that you fancy. And we're playing 180 yards with a slight breeze in too. Straightforward, really. It should be interesting. Oh, be right hand, be the right club. At least carry the bunker anyway. Oh, it's a bit long. It was definitely uh, the longer option. I didn't want to be in those two bunkers and uh, I'll take it. It was a slightly lower ball flight than I'd have hoped. It pitched on the green and kicked on. But let's be honest, it could be worse. Right, that has got to be the smallest sort of tier and level to get to. And again, I'm just debating, I mean, is it, is it wedge or is it putter? I'm going to go wedge, but this is going to swing a fair old bit. Oh, and you've played one. Whoa, don't go any further. More than happy with that. Right, where's me putter? Let's see if we can get off this, uh, get off to a start with a, a bit of a par. Line aimed at centre of the cup. Positive. Yes. Okay, that's a great up and down, but what a par three that is. Everything about it, this green is incredible. It's that elevated tee position that makes it so special. And the view over to the sea in the backdrop is, uh, well, that's a great start to the challenge. But next up is a par five. Roll out. Roll out. Ah, might have been good enough. But oh my God, you know what, what a week we have had in Ireland and uh, how lucky have I been with the weather. This is the final leg of our little, uh, little tour, which hopefully you've been watching every episode, started in Boris, went to the European club, then we got to Arklow and now we finished at uh, this Jameson Lynx and uh, they've all been incredible, but uh, what an afternoon we've got right now. Anyway, we're moving on to that, uh, that par five and uh, I think we should do the same as the last one let's take some words of advice from Paul and what are we looking to at least try and do yeah so number 12 um, again trying to just to create a better connection with the with the sea so we've um, it, previously it was a par four index one so a pretty strong uh, par four and we've extended it back uh, quite a bit and created a plateau green which sits again quite high up um, so you're playing your third shot uh, from a from a sort of a low area on the fairway up to a green. So it creates a bit of drama. Um, you, you know, the, the longer hitters or, or better players will be able to take it on in two. Um, and there is a little bit of a runoff at the back, but you don't want to go too far over the back because if you take it maybe more than 25 yards over the back, you're going to be down a pretty steep cavern uh, and, you know, <laughs> there'll be a no score from there. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's a challenging tee shot. Um, you can lay up uh, to maybe 90, 100 yards and then that'll leave you an uphill shot for your third. It's some quite intimidating bunkers down the right hand side. So the play is really to try and keep it up on the left. Right, that's away and it's in a good position. I've pulled up short of that bunker, got a yardage on the bunker left, just pulled up short of it. I'm playing this as a three shot of par five. Another forward into that uh, fairway and then hopefully a short wedge into the green. According to Paul, I don't want to be long with a wedge, but we've got two bits to go yet. That's really good. It's a high ball. Oh, actually, no, I didn't carry that. I'm on that bank left above the bunker. That wasn't as good as I first thought it was. Be good, be good. Oh, well, let's hope that's the right yardage. Wedge in, I've got a bit lucky, don't get me wrong, because I thought it was up in that stuff where I've clearly cambered down. 
into the fairway and uh, well it's just all down to yardage now Paul suggested don't go long and that's the only thing I'm concerned about so this would be a nice birdie because I think that's a tough par five especially if I've got the distance to get up in two I think it's got a bit of a swing there's a swing no oh right at the end it did maybe overread that one a little bit but I think um, yeah I think that was a good par five maybe got a bit lucky on the second shot decent off the tee and then a great iron in I don't know where the sun's gone but it needs to come back out again now photo of the week is a good one in my opinion take your pick and or Tracy in the comments down below My final warm-up putt. This is uh, 16. It's a bit past the flag for a par. The greens have been running so true. I've overrun. I've overrun most of them. Oh, I just can't seem to get the ball in the hole at the minute. That's wherever I play. But yeah, pace has been so good. But we're on to our final challenge hole, and this is the one. To be honest with you, I really came back for. Yeah, so 17 is really exciting because um, one of the things that we felt we could improve was the, the finishing stretch. Uh, 16 is a very strong par 4, as is 18. Um, and 17 previously was a very, very tough par 3. Um, so what we've done now is we've created a par 4. Again, push the green back into uh, the bottom of the dune. Um, so now it's a, it's a real risk and reward par 4 if you can have such a thing. So. Uh, if you hit your tee shot, up, uh, tee shot up the left hand side, you're going to create a nice view uh, into a green that you're hitting down into. But if you lose your tee shot slightly to the right, you're going to have a semi-blind second shot onto a very small green. Um, so it gives people, it gives players a real good chance of making a birdie uh, on the finishing stretch. Right, well you've had a good look at it, you heard Paul's explanation, but for me it's I still 360 yards to the flag, that risk or reward element, well I'm afraid it's going to be forward. I'm going to be trying to find a position and uh, leave a short enough iron in hand to hopefully get down with that birdie that he suggested. But, uh, well, we'll see. Forward for me, anyway. That's a decent enough strike. Pull left, which is a habit I've had all day. It looks to be going towards a sort of path on the left-hand side. It was never going to be driver for me i can't get that uh, yardage that is that risk or reward element because it looks like if you sort of carry around that sort of 250 you might catch the down slope and get yourself close to the hole but it's a very narrow and uh, tight gully and even with forward in hand i couldn't find it right okay dilemma first of all extremely lucky and unlucky at the same time i'm going to say because uh if I just carry it another 10 yards, I'd be in a much better position. We're in a very much elevated position, coming down to a pin that seems very much at the front. And yeah, as interesting as this green complex looks, I'm really not sure what sort of shot to play. The, 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 the decision is, I'm gonna feed it off the right, but it's gonna land short at the same time. Right, can we execute the plan? Oh, come on, that is, I can't hit that any better. It's got to have the right bounce. Oh my word, it hasn't bounced left. I cannot believe it hasn't bounced left. Oh my word, I've, I've pitched it on the fringe, right to the flag, which is the exact place I was aiming for, and the ball has disappeared to the right. If you take a look back, I don't know if the camera's on there, but this is where it sort of fed in. 
and you'd think that it was going to kick down and the whole green seems to go that way and for some reason I landed must have somewhere around here and it's fed off to the side and now I've got an absolute stinker I'll be honest with you how much faith have I got in my short game or do we go the safe route and use a Texas wedge it's bold <laughs> you don't want to go too far past the flag either I've just noticed because I'll be off the green again come on and concentrate ah do you know what I'm really pleased with that it was a delicate little shot it was easy to stab at it and uh, fire one over the other side so I can finish that off surely I'm getting serious now flags coming out for a two footer and I'm reading it right you know I like to play these firm and positive yes firm and positive oh do you know what I'd take a uh, well I'd take a four on there any day of the week it's a real great addition last time I played it this was a par three and they've extended to make what is a really interesting uh, 17th uh, which is prior to penultimate green which is already super tough as well and uh, now creates I think as Paul said a really strong finish so our round of golf was over but that's just a small part of the Port Marnock experience the Jameson Lynx golf course is a part of the magnificent Port Marnock Resort and I have to give you a quick look around this place before we go. Jameson Bar, I suppose, the reason why people love coming here is, is the history of the place and the history of being in the home of the Jameson Whiskey family, which is a rather unique um, setting to have. Um, I think especially our American our American golfers and our Canadian golfers um, just appreciate that history and to spend a bit of time between our Jemison Links course um, and like coming back in here whether it's for something simple like just a gourmet burger, um, some of our um, Kerrigan Butcher's um, sirloin steaks and um, you know we, we, there's a bit of a nod to where we come from as well in terms of like our beefing in a stew um, which is a you know a simple dish but it's something that again people like and especially on more wintry days on the golf course coming back to a nice bowl of stew is, is something nice to have as well. So our CV restaurant um, is a new concept um, we've kind of even gone away from the, the restaurant word and it's more kind of a bistro brasserie um, and it's again it's, it's, some, it's a location that the views is, is what makes it and obviously the name suggests it's a sea view and it looks out to the Irish Sea it looks across to Ireland's Eye and Lambay Island as well um, I suppose we were very conscious of that in mind and we opened a seafood bar and I suppose we were very um, aware of what we wanted it to be. We didn't want it to be a, you know, a really formal restaurant, we, we'd like it to be a, a location where you know, a couple can come and just have a, a bowl of oysters or a seafood platter and enjoy a bottle of champagne with that or you know, as well as a person that wants to come and have that three course dining experience, so there's loads to enjoy. The Port Monarch Resort is the perfect play and stay option in my opinion because it caters for all your needs both on and off the golf course. The hotel is fantastic and after a day of golf, some great food and drinks, it's off to a lovely room with those stunning views across that velvet strand. I'll see you next week.